This is Ken Jury and Trevor Harden. Our very special guest to counterbalance today is one of Australia's highly regarded conservation biologists. Professor Hugh Pottingham, a professor of mathematics and zoology, was South Australian raised and educated but now resides in Queensland, lecturing in the University of Queensland Ecology Centre. He's a Rhodes Scholar and he's renowned for his work throughout the world, as is an Australian Research Council Feder- and he is a, an Australian Research uh, Council Fellow. Uh, Professor Hugh Pottingham is a member of the Wentworth Group of Scientists, and to give you some idea how fortunate we are to have him on Counterbalance today, he averages one seminar or talk every week, all year round, on a wide diversity of topics above and beyond his formal uh, teaching duties. Uh, Professor Hugh Pottingham, welcome to the Flurio Peninsula's Counterbalance. Hi Ken, how are you going? Th- very well, thank you uh, Professor, and uh, look, thanks for joining us, we really appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, Many people uh, near the end of the system, the Murray-Darling Basin system uh, uh, down here, are calling to have the lower lakes return to an estuarine feature, as it was in pre-barrage times. They want this for several reasons. That includes saving precious fresh water back upstream, where it can be yet better used, uh, and so on. At the moment, it disappears once it passes Lock 1 and as it empties into the lakes and is lost to evaporation forever. So surely, returning the lakes to an estuarine feature would result in halting the extremely bad acid mobilisation and also see the return of pre-barrage biota. Uh, Professor uh, uh, Pottingham, would that be a, a fair comment? Uh, would, uh, I'd appreciate your comment on this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think um, my main expertise is in ecological things. I'm not that great on soil and water, mm. but um, certainly from the perspective of the flora and the fauna, an estuarine system is far more interesting. I mean, I, I think I spend a lot of my youth bird watching in the Flurio Peninsula. Yes. In fact, most of my youth bird watching in that area, and when we wanted to see some water birds, we'd go down to the Goolwa area and the Goolwa barrages. And to be honest, on the barrage side, uh, the freshwater side, it was deadly dull most of the time. Um, <laughs> not a lot of diversity. Um, and mm. when it was getting dry and and uh, and it was drying out, in fact, there was more diversity. And in fact, most birds don't just want either freshwater or saltwater. It's mm. all the interesting stuff in between being fresh and being salty, which you get in an estuarine system, the entire gradient which creates variability, and variability is good for diversity, mm. particularly in Australian systems. Mm. So I'm absolutely convinced that uh, having a gradient uh, and a highly variable gradient of salinity all through that system would promote bird life enormously and also uh, return the vegetation along the banks to much more of what it once was with, a, again, a higher diversity of uh, habitat types. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's Tra- Trevor Harden here, Professor Possingham. Look, uh, just a, uh, a thought I've had, and, and it's a concern of mine. It follows on from what you were saying, I think. Uh, one of the arguments being put up by uh, the governments that are, are really uh, opposing the notion of reconnecting uh, through the barrages uh, to the sea and having that uh, gradient of salinities is that this would irrevocably destroy a freshwater-based ecology that's been there for thousands of years. Now... From my reading, it seems that that's a gross oversimplification of arid system ecology. As, uh, with salinities varying over time in the lake system, surely the retreat of freshwater-based populations into the lower reaches of rivers as the saltier water intruded in drought years would be balanced by recruitment back into the wider lake environment when fresh water returned, and vice versa for the estuarine and marine species. Uh, perhaps your comment on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it has been a freshwater system for thousands of years, and I don't think there's really much evidence that that's true. Mm. I mean, don't they say there was a shark skeleton at the at the bottom of the river at Morgan found You're absolutely right. years ago? Yes. So uh, something was happy to get all the way up that system. Mm. Um, so, I, I mean, I, you know, humans, I think, have a problem in the sense that we do like a lot of stability Mm. and it may be where northern Europeans came from and we would like our lakes 
you know, you go to a park and look at the lake, and the lake is always the same level, and it sits there, and never, you never get any mud. In fact, people don't like mud. Hmm. But anybody who knows anything about nature knows that a, a very variable water level is one of the most important things for diversity. Well, a very variable salinity level is also extremely important for diversity, because most of the birds and fish, and even invertebrates that we're interested in, are all adapted to moving, as you say, up and down the system, and they'll move to where the water is and they'll move to what salinities they like. Um, uh, but these very static systems where the water level is fixed uh, are good for a very small number of organisms um, uh, and, and certain sorts of plants, but the diversity of ecosystem types aren't there. And, and, and it's also, sometimes we've just sort of accept change and do some habitat types. I mean, if, if, if the salt water intrudes back into the system, there will be large areas of freshwater plants that may temporarily disappear, but they will be replaced by the, the sandfire systems, the uh, systems that can deal with variable salinities and variable water levels quite quickly, and those systems also tend to create a lot of feeding opportunities for wildlife. So, I mean, it won't be the same, but, and it'll be different, but I, I'm, I'm absolutely confident that all the data says that diversity likes variability. Unfortunately, people don't like it. But that if we want like the diversity, we're going to have to accept that everything's not going to be the same. And in fact, that means that the way we use the river, if you're launching your boat or you're going fishing or you're trying to extract water from it, you have to adapt to the environment rather than force the environment to adapt to you. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, so one of the activists a couple of years ago got some headlines by saying if we let the seawater in, it'll be like letting off an atom bomb. It'll kill everything. Not quite your <laughs> assessment of what would be the result? Uh, definitely not. I mean, some, some, some certainly a few organisms would suffer, but mine, I think they've already been suffering enormously from lack of water anyway. So Absolutely. Uh, a lot of the damage has already been done, but uh, we would head back to a system. And, of course... Um, that one-off sudden event, I mean, could be managed. It doesn't have to be opening the water. It doesn't have to all appear. It doesn't have to be open in one big flood, does it? I mean, these things can be managed and having the barrages there allowing us to just maintaining a more natural system, but if, if, if something goes wrong, then, then you can always try and make sure that they're operating again or move the water in a certain direction. Mm. The other thing that's worth remembering, of course, is by the end of the century, the sea level will be roughly up a metre. I don't know what the, pre the precise projections for sea level rise in, in that area are. It's roughly but, a, a metre from what we're told. Yeah, so, so ultimately you'd end up defending something that was indefensible and we're not mm. going to have a dike that is going to deal with... Well, it might just deal with a metre, but it's not going to deal with two or three metres. So the entire system will be estuarine eventually. Um, so I think getting it to adapt to a much more variable and dynamic system sooner rather than later is a good thing. That's good to hear. Um, I just wonder, you know, uh, uh, 